everyone of the Midwest and the US of A, the Great Lakes Rail Order is back with another commentary video. Today we're taking a look at the videos that have been posted in 2023 and the recently posted videos of the trains of Elkhart. Within about two and a half months, the total amount of views have reached to little over 10,000, which really isn't that bad for a beginner. But taking a look at the present amount, huh, that's actually not bad. Now the video with the most amount of views out of all of them was the Pier Marquette 1225 Rides Again video. This just so happens to be one of the many other videos out there that have been captured by other rail fans on camera since its return. Basically, back in 2023, Michigan Steam Special was released, featuring some history, before and after shots, and a run to and from Ashley. But you may have noticed some informational errors, and there were also some others that you may or may not have noticed. So we'll take a look at what went wrong as we hop aboard the train of mistakes. For this, we'll be taking a look at Pier Marquette 1225 Rides Again and Michigan Steam Special. Our first one is the weather. The National Weather Service was tracking rain that was heading for East Michigan. Owasso stood in the path of the approaching system, and the rain made the dirt roads all mud. This played a part of how filming the train on King Road would be affected. Like in storm chasing, if a storm chaser is chasing a storm with the possibility of a tornado, vehicle could get bogged down on a dirt road. Giving the possibility that the RFD, or rear flank downdraft, would push the car off. So, if you do plan to go chasing a train or chasing a steam excursion, you might want to check the weather reports in case your planned route gets rained out. Because we hit a couple of dirt roads that were all mud. This next part, you can clearly see. This shot is when the Mighty Mouse Diesel is pulling the 1225 out of the shed. In the heading, it says 8 o'clock a.m., when really it was like around 7.40 a.m. I had to round it up to make it look like it was being pulled out at a later time. But while I was lucky enough to get this shot, I was then told to leave as the steam railroading institute workers were still getting the 12.25 ready, which makes sense. I kind of was filming at a bad time when the 1225 was still being prepped. So I left as instructed and waited around a little longer until everything was ready to go. You know what, let's add another one in for bad timing. A couple of hours later, the 1225 is ready to go as we now see it pulling out. We needed to go ourselves too. But as we jumped into the car, we were held up at a traffic light or two on M21. This was not just one or two, but three times I tried to get ahead of a train to film it. This was the first time I did it. I originally planned to stop at the Big B Coffee that is trackside where the Polar Express train will pass. But we ended up getting the shot at the grade crossing instead. The second time was on a Wednesday, as I caught what they describe as an office train. I was hoping to chase it to the Amtrak train station in Holland, but got caught up in traffic. And to make matters worse, it was during the evening commute. So when I heard it pass through over the scanner, I immediately had to abort. The third one was on the first week of Saturday. Just leaving home to visit some folk, I heard a train was passing through Holland at the time. The thought of getting far enough ahead of it to find a rail fan spot to record it did cross my mind at the time. But I just headed straight into town, but was stopped when the train crossed over the rails. I immediately chased it down M121 towards Granville 
And when I got into the city limits, there was just nothing I can do. I just had to abort it. The next one is at the Mason and Delaney Crossroad, where I switched cameras. Originally, I planned to film it on my phone, but decided to switch it out with the GoPro Hero 11, which cost me time. Just as I got up and running, the Polar Express was now approaching the crossing. It was up to the point that we needed to go to the next film location, which was the Wilkinson and Smith Crossroad. But as we traveled there, I was confused about where to go, causing me to stall while the Polar Express got ahead. While I was planning my route, I went over it a few times, but thankfully, my backseat navigator got me back on track. As we were lucky enough to see it pass by. Okay, now this one isn't really an error, but I guess an honorable mention. This shot was tricky, a drive-by shot of the Polar Express. As I mentioned earlier, the rain caused the dirt roads to get muddy, and at 35 miles an hour, it's rough. But this shot was worth it, and it must have been quite popular. Okay, the next real one. The next shot is at Bannister, as we leapfrog ahead to film it from across a field. This was on our filming location list, but I didn't expect to film it this soon. We originally planned to see the Polar Express going through Carlan and Elsie, but we had to skip them in order to get back ahead of the train. We eventually filmed it on the return trip at Elsie, but skipped Carlan as well as we head directly back to Owasso. You know what? Let's add three more Deans to the list. This next one is at the Ashley Country Christmas, at one of the sheds that was mentioned housed glass making. This was unfortunately the only shot we've taken, but we wish we've seen more of it because it would have been cool to see what the glass looked like when it was finished. Maybe next time we'll be lucky. Now that we've went over the mistake count for filming, let's take a look at the development mistakes that I found. The first one is the cameras that were used, but they look the same, or are they? The phone's camera function played the videos I recorded on the computer, but the videos I tried to watch from the GoPro Hero 11 wouldn't give me any picture, just sound. Which is kind of disappointing, which really it's just disappointing to see that all that hard work gone to waste. All for nothing. This is all thanks to the codec programming the GoPro Hero 11 has called High Efficiency Video Coding, or HEVC. Production of the video grinds to a halt when I found this out the hard way. Before I went to Owasso to record the Polar Express train, I did some testing on the GoPro Hero 11 to see how it will work. Apparently, I didn't do enough testing. This was thought to be a total loss, but I was able to salvage it from what I recorded on my phone. So what you're seeing in the Pier Marquette 1225 Rides Again video is the 1225 pulling ahead to take on water, not to head to Ashley. But the video special was eventually saved as I heard of a video editing app that converted the HEVC videos to a format I can use. But when I found out about it, it was a week later. So I had to work overtime in order to get it done before Christmas Day. And that led to some information errors. Many of you have noticed some informational errors in the video, and this was the fact that this video was on a rush. So I never bothered to double check the facts until it was too late. But the two comments in the Michigan Steam special comment section gave some changes, which were easily recognizable. Thank you at Craig Brown 7929 and at Johnson Family Farm 5672 for spotting them. The first information error is right here. The two sources that were researched were MichiganSteamTrain.com and Railway Productions. It turns out that the webpage from MichiganSteamTrain.com was right on both ends. 
The 1225 served for 10 years instead of 17, and it was placed at the campus of Michigan State University, not the University of Michigan. So it's no mystery that the Pierre Marquette was placed at the University of Michigan. It's because there was no information about it being placed at the University of Michigan campus. I do apologize for getting the information wrong. I do also apologize to anyone who already heard the misinformation. The next one is the tender. The image of the Polar Express littering was recreated to show what it looked like in 2006. No, it wasn't photoshopped, if that's what you're thinking. You can see the gray background with the Polar Express lettering over it. So, this really isn't an error. It was supposed to give the audience an idea of what it looked like. So, that brings the total to. So, that's it from where things went wrong. But who knows? Maybe there were more that I might have missed. So, let me know in the comments section below if you see anything else. Thank you for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Outtakes. Where's the outtakes? So you might want to take a look at the weather reports in case your route gets rained out. Hey, I made a rhyme. Route out. How about that? I'm a poet and didn't know it. So be sure to check the weather reports in case your planned route gets rained out. Because we ran into a couple of dirt roads that were all mud. Because I assure you, if I don't check the weather reports before I go train spotting, my name is Mud. <laughs> Get it? A bit of a weather pun. Wait, we're still not recording, are we? So I left as instructed and waited a little longer until everything was ready to go. Should I have said waited or hanged around? I don't know. Is there a difference? But apparently, I didn't study it over enough. But my backseat navigator got me back on track. Uh, pun intended. Track. Polar Express. Ha ah, ha. Ah, funny. Funny. Ha ah, ah. <laughs> ha. Okay, now I'm overdoing it. The first one is the cameras that were used. But they look the same. Or are they? Too much? But they look the same. Or are they? How is that? Nope. But they look the same. Or are they? How is that? That good? Okay, that good. Wait, we're still not recording, are we? Again? But this was delayed for about a week, and I had to work overtime to get it done. And boy, what a overtime it has been. Over time, I planned everything out. Over time, I grew tired. <laughs> Over the time, it was quite a drive to Owasso. Over time, I waited for things to get ready. And over time, I waited at traffic lights to turn green. I even was overdue for some time to rest. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was an overtimely production that went on. <laughs>